And that Bartholomew's Cobble, which is right off Route 57, it follows the Housatonic River right on the edge of the Massachusetts-Connecticut border. You can actually hike a trail right down to the Connecticut border. I'm at this parking area up at the top called the Cobble. Here's something I run into a lot when it comes to scenic ledge type places. These trees are all fairly young saplings. And I'm sure not too long ago, maybe a couple decades ago, this was all clear. And you had a beautiful view of this Housatonic River Oxbow. And they've just decided to stop trimming it. And I think that's a bad idea. The trustees of reservations, which holds this property and a number of others that I've showed you guys, like the Chesterfield Gorge, they're not funded by the state. They're a completely private organization. Now this is a scenic spot. Thankfully, there's only a few trees blocking it off, but this has a beautiful view. Yeah, it's open, thankfully. This is a beautiful little spot. There's nothing in here except a table and a bench. And of course, a very scenic view. That's the Housatonic River right down there. You can't really tell what goes here. It does kind of a omega shape and then comes all the way back around down to there. At least you can see a cute little bend right here. I bet this is a great spot for watching the sunrise. Past that little hut that overlooks the river is a neat little trail that kind of winds up a, a few hundred foot tall mountain here that I guess they call the Cobble, and this is called the Ledges Trail. This place is called Bartholomew's Cobble. I guess I'm not really sure what a cobble means in this regard. I just always interpret it as a kind of a cheap, readily available granite that you can just dig out of the ground. Interesting little gate right here, if you call it that that goes into this farmland type area. I guess this is to keep horses out or something. It's not a door or anything. I walked that oxbow all the way out to the end. It's very kind of tidal. It kind of reminds me of low tide on, on the ocean. Right now I'm at the tip of the oxbow. I'm surrounded on all sides by water. I'm doing a pano and you can see Maybe it's not obvious, but the river is following me for the entire bend. And that's because this is like a big omega shape from above. And the river actually goes right down there. And there's like a very small strip of land that will eventually erode away. And this will just become an abandoned oxbow pond. Finally, an explanation of the name. This was seabed 500 million years ago, which was before even the dinosaurs. Bartholomew's Cowl. I'll have to come back here for a sunrise shoot. I'm in the Harlem Valley in upstate New York. It's kind of on the edge of the Taconic Mountains, which is this long ridge line that goes along the road here. The mountain I wanted to go up to for sunset called Round Ball, which is right up there. The road getting to the trailhead was really, really sketchy, and I did not want to push my the van that hard before I get my off-road tires and my suspension kit. So the question now is where to sleep tonight. That mountain up the road that I found the trailhead road a little sketchy to drive on might actually be a good place to crash. You know, it's the day before New Year's Eve, it's winter, it's like a weird day of the week, like a Thursday. What are the chances that a trooper is going to come there in the middle of the night, you know? Can you all see this? Not exactly a trailhead, but I think I found a pretty cool place to sleep tonight. I'm at Union Cemetery in Ancram, New York. This one looked really cool because it's right in the center of town. And like a few of the others, it's built onto this really hilly, rocky terrain. This part of New York is kind of along the Deconic Ridge up the Hudson Valley. It's very much farmland for being sandwiched between a bunch of population centers. Knickerbocker, now there's a very New York name. Yeah, you can see how it's really on a hill once you get up here. But look how cozy and peaceful this is. There's a little gated one right here that looks to be among the oldest in the cemetery. Shh, 
Shook, 1885. This person passed in 89, but someone recently put up a little picture of a buck. I guess it was a hunting community or whatever. Over there, you've got a truck and a covered bridge. This cemetery gets some love. A lot of these flowers and wreaths and ornaments are very recently placed. Now here's one that stands out. Moore and his family, her family, I don't know who it is, but yeah, this is a fairly big monument. It's probably the biggest in this little cemetery. Google isn't telling me the name of this river here, but it, it's clearly a tributary of the Hudson. And once I got down to the side of the river, I noticed there's a little smaller section down here with some more gravestones. Now I've seen people get photos laser etched onto the slab, but this is just like a bas relief kind of carved right into the stone. That's kind of interesting. I wonder how that was done. And over here we have Arthur M. Clarke, not to be confused with a famous sci-fi author. Is this not a perfect little cemetery? Right in the center of town, you got your village there, you got a river down here. And it's small, but very geographically interesting. You've got a hill, you've got that river, you've got kind of a wooded area over here. Some, a grove of nice tall pines casting shade. Oh, I love this cemetery. I am absolutely in love with it. I'm in West Tacanic Cemetery in Tacanic, New York. It's right off the Taconic State Parkway, which is a very nice highway. The upper Hudson River Valley, kind of halfway between New York City and Albany, which is where we are right now, is very rural. It's farm country, which is amazing to think, but it's so historic. There are historic site signs, battlefield signs from the Revolutionary War. Everywhere you go, preserved communities. This cemetery, however, looks to be more recent than some of the other ones I've visited. You see, here's the cemetery. And over here, a pile of discarded flowers, crosses, ornamentation, stuff that people have left on the graves. And yeah, the church does remove them and they throw them in a freaking pile over here. How disgusting is that? They can't even take it to a dump. Yeah, I find that kind of shocking that they would remove the ornamentation from the graves and then just dump it in the corner. I mean, you can see it from, you can see it from the parking lot. It's just a pile of junk. I can't believe they do that. You know, it's just clearly run by this tiny little Baptist church right here probably run by volunteers I'm sure so they do what they can but still I'm a little stunned by that here's another highly ornamented grave but after seeing that pile of garbage I wonder how long until all these fake fl plastic flowers just end up over in that pile you know here's something else I like that I know in a lot of other cemeteries won't allow clearly when they buried this person they planted two trees next to the grave and the cemetery has allowed them to grow now this I can get behind. Here's somebody who just left natural plants on their grave to biodegrade, not a bunch of plastic stuff. I think that's the right idea. I'm at the trailhead for the lake trail, which goes around Tacanic Lake, which is just about 10 minutes south of that last cemetery I was in. I just found it on all trails. I want to stretch my legs and not do something mountainous. This is actually a very scenic lake. Um, again, it's got kind of cobble hills that wind up all the sides. I wonder if it's maybe a reservoir. It kind of reminds me of a miniature version of the Quabbin in Massachusetts. On one side of the lake, there's a public beach. It's kind of cat corner to the part of the trail I'm on right now. Just turned around and got back to the van because I felt sketchy leaving it unattended in a park I've never been in. I don't know, it made me uncomfortable. So Don's gonna hang out at it for a while. I'm gonna try walk in the road in the other direction around the lake clockwise. Let's see if there's anything to see. So going this way, it's a much more graded road 
but more of a service road but it goes to this intersection to an actual paved road and there's a bunch of housing these aren't camp campgrounds or anything i was wrong i'm thinking this is actually a campground since they're all the same rustic style and all empty right now um i think i'm gonna walk in this shoreline until someone stops me let's see how far i can go Okay, so this isn't a little campground at all. I take that back. It's fairly expansive. Yep. These Canada geese, they've taken the very last cabin just before, like, the picnic area. I wonder if that's because there used to be some discarded food over there. But, you know, as a human, I would always pick this spot as well. It's closest to the exit. I'm getting to where the public beach starts, and it looks oddly like a man-made dam, except with beach sand hauled into the inward facing side of the dam. I hope that's not what it is because that seems like a human disaster waiting to happen. I've never seen a public beach sand stack like this where they build a wall right against the, the gravel sidewalk. And that's kind of like something out of Iraq. But the park office for this Lake Deconic park system is just a beautiful style that I totally dig. I'm assuming everything is closed because of the holiday and not the pandemic, though it could be both for all I know. But I'm glad they leave it the trail open for people to walk around the lake. Because the weather has been so good for this time of the year, I can't help but get outside and get some much needed exercise. I love driving through the Deconics on a foggy winter day like this. You can see all through the trees. And we kind of have the road to ourselves today. It's awesome. The light is beautiful right now, too. Bartholomew's Cobble. 